Prompt a lot got an important update this week. In fact, I added one of the most requested features of all. But I also made some other adjustments which aren't as obvious at first glance. So without much further ado, let's dive right in. All right, so before I walk you through all of the things that I've changed, let me briefly check in with the people who are not familiar with Prompt a lot. Basically, Promptalot is an extension for the Chrome web browser or any other Chromium-based web browser. And what it does is within Discord, it attaches itself to every single one of your prompts or jobs or upscales, and it looks a little bit like this. And I know this may seem a little overwhelming at first because of all of the buttons, but trust me, once you get the hang of it, it's actually quite simple. And what it basically does, it eliminates the need for constantly copying and pasting parts of a previous prompt just in order to be able to prompt it again or make slight changes. So basically, prompt a lot will allow you to copy either the entire prompt or individual parts of the prompt, but it also does a whole bunch of other stuff. And if you'd like to get a full walkthrough of every single one of the features of this extension, then make sure you check out this video right here that I released over a month ago which explains every single tiny feature in detail. And if you'd like to give this free extension a try, then simply head on over to promptalot.com slash extension, and that will forward you to the Chrome Web Store where you can then install it inside your Chrome Web Browser. So let's have a look at what's changed. I'm gonna quickly zoom into one of the toolbars here. And the most obvious change is the fact that the layout has changed. So while the initial buttons are still all more or less the same, you still have the copy the full prompt, append, image prompt, text prompt, parameters, seed, and job. What I've done is I've moved the buttons that were previously within the beta section of the extension into the primary upper section of the toolbar, and mainly because they relate to the prompt or the job itself. So what you'll find here now is the button with the envelope icon, and what that does is it simply reacts to the job or the prompt with the envelope icon, similar to as what you would do by simply right-clicking and selecting the envelope. And what that will do is it will tell the Midjourney bot to send you all of the additional details for your prompt. You also have the upscale all button right here, which simply upscales every single one of the four images within an image grid, if this was on an image grid, which it isn't, to be honest. But from what I've heard, the Midjourney team is not particularly keen on anything that revolves around automating things around Midjourney. And I kind of understand that because there's a lot of tools out there that literally automate tons of stuff, even when you're not even in front of your computer. And the problem with that is that it tends to create a lot of artificial server load at times when usually there wouldn't be as much. And that can actually deteriorate the user experience for all the users. And I guess that's something that they're neither keen on, nor is it within the terms of service, I believe. So basically using the upscale all button is kind of still okay because it's not actually interacting with the Midjourney bot itself, but all it really does, it just clicks buttons, which you were going to press anyway and it saves you a little bit of time. The only thing that I would recommend is that if you're going to use it, make sure you're being reasonable about it and only upscale when you really need to. If all you're trying to do is get basically every single one of the four images of an image grid, rather than hitting the upscale all button, I would recommend just clicking on the envelope icon and then you'll get it via the Midjourney bot directly. Now I understand it's not entirely the same thing, it's a little bit less convenient, but you know, just be mindful of this. Now another thing you'll notice is that we now have this danger zone section just before the delete button. And the reason why I've added this is because previously there was the slight risk of you potentially clicking on the delete button and it will literally just delete the entire prompt straight away. Like no, it will not ask for confirmations or anything. And the reason why I don't actually have a confirmation dialogue in there is because that would kind of defeat the purpose of the button in the first place. You see, we're trying to save clicks and not create additional ones. And um, if, you, if you want to have sort of a safer way of doing things that you can just right click and react with the X, um, that's how you would have done it previously. And this is supposed to speed things up. Now, I think that there's now sufficient distance from the most commonly used buttons so that the likelihood of you accidentally hitting that delete button is really, really low. Now, the other major change about the layout is that I've now moved the image related buttons into the lower section of the toolbar and all the way to the left. Now, I'm pretty sure some of you will like this change and others will absolutely hate it. That's just how it is. 
But personally, I actually think this makes a lot more sense because now you've got all of the most important buttons all pretty much close to each other and you don't have to constantly move left and right just to get to the different buttons. Again, it just kind of makes a little bit more sense this way because these buttons are just closer to each other. And the other reason is that I had to make this change in order to facilitate other changes to the extension that were really important. Now, before we move on, I'd just like to quickly show you one little thing that I've also introduced on the download button over here. Let me zoom out for this. And what you'll notice is that now when you click on the download button, it will not just download the image, but it will also color this button green. And it will also add this little green check mark in the top left corner of the image. So whenever you download an image, it will add these things and make these visual changes to the interface. Now, the benefit of this is that if you're working within a longer session and then you want to download certain images, you might scroll up and down all the time and you might lose track of which images you've actually already downloaded or not. And this will help you keep track of that a little bit. Now, it's important to note that these visual changes are not permanent. They are not persisted. So that means that as soon as you switch to a different channel like this, or you go into a uh, into, into your DMs, or you go to a different server, or you reload the page, then these visual elements are going to disappear. That is simply because Discord is rebuilding the entire user interface every single time you do this. Now, technically, I could try to keep track of every single image that you've downloaded, uh, just so that later on we could make these changes permanent. However, that would not be a reasonable thing to do because there's a significant risk that that sort of a process would require considerably more resources and that would ultimately make the extension more sluggish than it should be. So the way I've handled it now, I believe, is, is a good compromise because it does add additional value to those who, who might need it. And, but it also does not necessarily impact any of the other functionalities of the extension. Now, let me zoom back into our extension here and let's focus on the last section here, which is the prompt a lot section. I'm not going to go through every single one of these buttons, but what you'll notice is that I've now moved the mid journey stats indicators to the right of the extension. And what you'll also notice is that the mid journey stats button, which used to open up the page has disappeared. The reason why it's disappeared is because you now simply need to click on any of these indicators and it will open up the very same page. So we're saving a little bit of space on this. Now, the other things that you may have noticed are this button here with a cog wheel, which opens up a control panel and settings, as well as this upgrade button. And these two are related to features that have been requested for a very, very long time. Now, I know that some of you are probably going to roll their eyes or maybe even complain that I'm introducing a paid tier for this extension. But listen, building all of this takes time and it's also a lot of work. And as much fun as it is for me, it also helps me pay the bills, just like you go to your workplace in order to pay your bills. So if you enjoy the content that I share here and would like to support the work that I do, then consider getting a very affordable pro subscription. Anyway, so let me walk you through the new features. So when you click on this cog button here, it's going to open up an extra window. And in this window, you'll have settings. Now, initially, all you're going to see is basically you're in the top left corner. It will show which plan you're on. And in this case, it's the free plan and an activate prompt a lot pro section, which has a text field where you can enter a license key and then you can verify it. Now, I realize I'm showing you a license key here, but trust me, this is not going to work for you because this is all still happening on my local machine and this license key doesn't actually do anything outside of it. Anyway, so if you wanted to retrieve your license key, what you would do is you would click on this link over here, which will open up the profile page within the prompt a lot website. Now, obviously you need an account for this and you need to be logged in. If you don't have an account yet, of course you can register for one. And if you then scroll down, you will see this section called license key. Now you will only see this section if you actually have a pro subscription. If you don't have a pro subscription, you'll just not see anything down there. But if you do, then this little section will pop up and then you can simply click the copy button, which will copy the license key to your clipboard. Then you can go back to Discord, enter the key into this field, and then you hit the verify button. Once you do this, these settings will then appear. And what you'll see is that in the top left corner, it shows you that you're on the pro plan. And then it gives you three additional settings. 
Now, the very first setting is the toolbar style. And what this basically does, it allows you to choose between a large toolbar style, which is essentially the same style that you already see now, as well as a compact style, which is considerably more reduced. But before I show you what that looks like, I still also want to show you some of the additional color schemes that you now can choose from. So for example, the default color scheme is teal, which is just linked to my brand colors. But if you want to switch to something like Discord, then you would simply choose large Discord, and then it would look like this. And these colors are much more aligned with the user interface of Discord as you're used to it. Now, we could also switch to the slate color scheme, which looks like this, which is a more of a bluish gray. Or you could also switch to Dracula, which some of the developers among you might be familiar with. Or you could also choose a lighter version of something that aligns to the Discord user interface, which is stone. Now this is just for the color schemes, but I think that this will already make a huge difference for a lot of users, simply because the extension will now be a little bit less of an eyesore, and you can just adjust it to colors that are more visually pleasing. The other thing that you can do though, is you can also switch to a compact style of the toolbar. So for this purpose, let me choose the compact slate. And what you'll see is that we now have a much more condensed version of the extension. So you just have this very long toolbar that contains all of the buttons that the regular toolbar has as well, except that everything's just smaller. So the buttons are smaller, there's less space between them, and it simply occupies less space within your interface. Now, what you can see though, is that we still have the mid-journey stats indicators here, which some people find annoying. And we have the tooltip bar here at the bottom, which is useful for beginners simply because it tells you what these buttons do. But once you understand what they do, you don't really need them anymore. So what you could do in order to remove these is open up the control panel again, and then simply deactivate either the info bar or the mid-journey stats indicators or both, and then these will no longer show up. And these changes can also be made with the large version of the toolbar style. So if I select the large version, you'll see that here again, the Imagine stats indicators are gone, and so is the tooltip bar. Now, there's one more thing though that I wanna show you because if you're in the compact version of the toolbar and still find this to be too intrusive, well then you can do another thing. You could simply click this left button here, the very first one, and it will hide the entire toolbar. It will do this everywhere. So you only need to click it whenever you want to really access these functionalities. And if you don't, you simply close it off. Now it's very similar to simply just turning off the toolbar altogether, but uh, you might want to have this you know, readily available and handy and not just always have to go to this little button here in the bottom right corner. So this will make it considerably easier for you to just get rid of these distractions while you're working and then just open them up when you actually need them. Now you're probably wondering, what does the pro subscription even cost? Well, there's a couple of ways to find out. So you can either simply click on the upgrade button down here, or you can open up the control panel and click the upgrade button here, or you simply go to promptlot.com slash pricing, and then you'll get an overview. If I click on the upgrade button here, this will open up the pricing page. And what you'll see is that you've got the regular free tier, which most of you are on, but which also comes with certain limitations. Whereas the pro subscription costs $48 per year. And I emphasize per year, not per month. And that's basically $4 per month, which is essentially a cup of coffee at Starbucks. And what that gets you is not just the additional features within the Chrome extension itself, but you also get access to unlimited prompts as well as unlimited private prompts within the prompt lot repository in case you're using them. And of course, I'm constantly working on additional features to make both the website as well as the extension better and better. And for the most part, these features will remain exclusive to pro users. As you might imagine, feature requests that come from paying users obviously get more attention than those from those who aren't. Anyway, that's it for today's update on prompt -a -Lot. I hope you found this useful and remember to check the video description for my mid-journey course as well as a whole bunch of other free stuff. I'll see you next week. Keep on learning. Take care. Cheers.